In this video, I'll cover two very attractive hexagonal patterns that have considerable wow factor, but are reasonably easy to make. The Kawari Yaizakura and the Yai Asano Ha. And there's an additional pattern hidden in there as well. All patterns are explained with detailed step-by-step -step instructions in Book 3. The Jigumi for this project is exactly the same as the one I used to explain the Kawari Asano Ha in the last video. So to begin with, make up that jigumi. The link to the previous video is included below. The two new patterns will have an asanoha background, so insert the asanoha patterns. I often use a piece of masking tape to show the no-go areas. The first pattern is the kawariye sakura on the bottom right. It's one of the beautiful sakura family of patterns. If you look closely at the dimensional diagram shown before, you'll notice that the Kawariyo Zakura has an Asanoha base, so make up and insert the Asanoha in the Kawariyo Zakura hexagon. Once all the Asanoha pieces are in, it's time to start cutting the other pattern pieces. As you can see in the diagram, there's only one type of pattern piece, and we need 36 of them. Secure about 12 3mm kumiko in the left hand 60 degree kumiko cutting jig. The most efficient way of cutting these pieces would be to cut three lots of 12 at the same time. But here it's best to do one lot to start off with. So if there are any mistakes, there's not as much wastage. There's only one joint to cut, so mark the left hand side of the joint as normal. The end of the long part of the piece is 18.5mm from the left side of the joint, as shown by the red arrow, so measure and mark about 20mm from the mark you just made. These are simple joints, so place a mark down at least 6mm from the top and cut down to that line. then cut down at the end mark. Flip the jig around and mark the end of the short part of the piece. This is 5.8 millimetres from the left side of the joint, as shown by the red arrow. So measure and mark about 7 millimetres from the joint mark. Then mark the other side of the joint for cutting as normal. And cut the end of the short part. Remove the waste. Tape the pieces together, remove them from the jig and cut off both the ends. The next step is to trim the short end on the 60 degree jig to a diagonal measurement of 8.1 millimetres, as shown by the red arrow. This diagonal measurement is the easiest way I've found of measuring this length. Once you've hit the 8.1mm mark, or very close to it, this end is no longer touched. All adjustments are made on the long end. And that's close enough. The final step in making the pattern piece is to trim the long end on the 30 degree jig so the overall length is 26.2 millimetres as shown by the red arrow. With minor adjustment here a backstop can be useful and speed up the process. After two pieces have been trimmed Dry fit them for a test fit on the jigumi to see whether any adjustment is necessary.
When there's a clean fit, it's time to glue them together. Add glue to the bottom part of each of the legs and insert the pattern piece into the triangle. And that's all there is. Repeat that process 17 more times with whatever minor adjustment is needed for the individual pattern pieces and the Kawari Ozakura part of the project is done. The important thing to remember here is to make any necessary adjustments only on the long end on the 30 degree jig. Now let's move on to the Ayasana Ha. As you can see by the diagram, the Ayasana Ha consists of three pieces joined by a Mitsukure three-way joint and six locking pieces similar to those for the Kawari Asana Ha. There are two different ways of making the A Asana Ha with slightly different results as can be seen in the bottom two patterns. I find the way we use here to be slightly easier and generally results in cleaner joins. Both are covered in book three. First, trim the ends of 12 kumiko to a point in the 60 degree jig and secure in the cutting jig. Place your sliding bevel gauge firmly against the end stop and mark. Cut down two thirds as you would normally do for the mitsukure joint. Flip the jig around and mark and cut the other side of the joint as normal. and remove the waste. Flip the kumiko around so they're now firmly against the right hand end stop. Place your sliding bevel gauge firmly against the end stop and mark and cut as normal. This is a standard process for the Mitsukure joint. Flip the jig around Mark and cut the other side of the joint and remove the waste. Remove the kumiko and secure them in the 90 degree cutting jig with the ends firmly against the end stop. The end of the short part of the A-type kumiko is 9.5 millimeters from the point on the left side of the joint as shown by the red arrow. So measure and mark about 10.5 millimetres back from the joint. The end of the long part is 31.8 millimetres from the other side of the joint, again as shown by the red arrow. So measure and mark about 33 or 33.5 millimetres from the joint. Next, cut down on both of the end marks. Tape the pieces together, remove them from the jig and cut off both ends. That completes the cutting for the Type A Kumiko. Now onto the Type B Kumiko. We need six of these, so with one spare, secure seven in the cutting jig and mark as normal with the bevel gauge firmly against the end stop. Place marks down one third from the top and cut down to those marks. Flip the jig around, mark and cut the other side of the joint, then remove the waste. No different from any of the other Type B Kumiko we've made. Finally, place a pencil mark next to the joint. For consistency, this pencil mark and side 
will always face upwards. Mark and cut off the ends to the same dimensions as was done for the Type A Kumiko. And that's the cutting finished. The next step is to trim the pieces to size. First the Type A Kumiko. Starting with the short end, these need to be trimmed down to 9.5mm on the 30 degree jig, as shown by the red arrow. A couple of more shavings to go. And that's close enough. Now the Type B Kumiko. The diagonal length of the short end is 10.5mm. So trim down to that length on the 30 degree jig. Close enough. Next, trim two Type A and one Type B Kumiko to length for a trial fitting. This is 44.8mm as shown by the red arrow, but make these slightly over length by a very small amount. You can use a backstop here, but I still prefer to do this by eye, where I trim one to the exact length, then check the other two against that length. Once you've trimmed the three pieces, assemble them without glue for a trial fit. Make sure the pencil mark on the Type B Kumiko is facing upwards. The pieces were trimmed slightly over length, so more than likely they won't fit. But this is what we want. It's much easier to take wood off than to put it back on. Take the pieces back to the 30 degree jig and take the necessary one or two shavings off. Make sure you make this adjustment on the long end, definitely not on the short end. Without using any glue, insert the pieces fully into the triangle. The next step of the trial fit is to trim two locking pieces to length at 26.6 millimetres, first on the 15 degree jig then on the 75 degree jig. This is exactly as was done for the kaware asanoha. Take the two locking pieces and try to insert them in the corners. If they're too long, make any adjustments necessary on the 15 or 75 degree jig. Once they fit cleanly with slight tension, you know that your dimensions for the three internal cross pieces and for the locking pieces are correct. The trial is finished and it's now time to start putting it all together. Take the three cross pieces apart and glue them back together again and make sure the pencil mark on the Type B Kumiko is facing upwards. Add a dab of glue to the three corners and insert the assembled cross pieces. Continue exactly the same process with the other five triangles. And you now have the Tsuno Asano Ha pattern, which is also covered in Books 2 and 3. Cut and trim a sufficient number of locking pieces to size and begin adding glue and inserting.
Continue this process until the last two locking pieces are in. And that's it. The Kawari Yei Zakura and Yei Asanoha completed. And also the Tsuno Asanoha for good measure. All that's left now is to clean up the front and back and it's all finished. What I hope you've gained from this video is obviously how to make these two patterns, or three if you include the Tsuno Asanoha, but also an understanding that seemingly highly complex Kumiko patterns are not as difficult as they may initially appear. Provided you can break the patterns down into their component parts and have the patience to make whatever minor adjustments are needed when fitting those individual parts, all of the patterns that don't require special planes are world within reach. Patience and perseverance are the key. And regardless of whether you cut the kumiko joints by hand or by machine using various jigs, if you hope to tackle the more advanced hexagonal patterns where the pieces intersect the jigumi and flow on to adjacent triangles, it's essential that you learn the concept of kumiko designs and how they work and fit together by starting off at the beginning. Make up some of the simple square patterns before launching into patterns such as these. You'll find that the stress and frustration level will be much lower. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.